This section of chapter 9 deals with bias and variability of sampling distributions. So bias, which is a word that you're probably familiar with, um, in the statistical um, setting, it simply means how far is the center of your sampling distribution from the population mean. Now, um, so you can think of bias as being related to the mean or the average of your sampling distribution. We would like for our sampling distribution to be unbiased. So if we have an unbiased sampling distribution, that means that the distribution, um, or our sampling distribution, the mean of it, is very close to the mean of our population. So maybe uh, here's our uh, histogram for our sampling distribution, and maybe here's our population distribution. So we've got a little bit of bias. You can tell that the mean of the sampling distribution should be somewhere in this area, but the mean of our uh, population is slightly to the right of that. So that would be slightly biased. Uh, let's see if I can actually draw something that would be unbiased. Um, so here's another histogram of a different sampling distribution, and maybe there's our population. Um, so you can see that the center of both our sampling distribution and our populations, uh, the means of both are nearly in line. So we would consider this setting to be unbiased, and we would consider this setting to be slightly biased. And of course we are hoping for an unbiased sampling distribution because that means that we can use the results uh, to estimate the values for our population mean, uh, which is the entire reason that we are taking this sample. So bias relates to the mean of your sampling distribution and variability is going to uh, be related to the standard deviation. The variability of a sampling distribution simply measures how large the spread of the sampling distribution happens to be. The larger uh, the size of your sample, the uh, smaller your variability should be, which should make sense. If you're only taking a few samples, then it would be very easy for some of them to be on the low end and some of them to be on the very high end and hopefully some are here in the middle. But there could be quite a bit of spread. As you take more and more samples though, you should get more samples clustered here in the middle and there won't be too many, sorry these pictures are atrocious, uh, but there shouldn't be too many out there on um, the tail ends of both sides. So again, the rule there is the more samples you're able to take, the less variability you should see. There's a good graphic on page 576 in your book that I think um, gives a good visual representation of the difference between bias and variability. I'm going to try to recreate that graphic here, but you might want to just check out the original version in your book. So when we are um, working with sampling distributions, we our goal is to have both low bias and low variability, meaning we want the mean of our sampling distribution to be approximately the same as our population mean, and we also want to have very low variability between the values we are getting from our sampling distribution. We want them all to be clustered close together to that mean. Um, that's not always going to be the case, though. So let's say that each of these circles represents a bullseye. Um, there might be a situation where you could have high bias, meaning uh, the values you get out of your sampling distribution are not particularly close to your mean, if we're assuming that our mean, again, this is a bullseye, uh, so our mean would be the middle of the circle. Uh, but notice that those um, values that we get from our samples are all clustered close together. So this is... Um, high bias, so I'll say high bias, but low variability. This is terrible. Let's try this again. Hi 
thighs. Here we go. Whoa, variability. Now let's say that instead of having this situation when we take our samples, we end up with uh, kind of values that are scattered all around. They're relatively close to the center, um, but they're not particularly close to each other. This would be a situation where we have relatively low bias. Again, our points aren't too far away from the center of the circle. But we have high variability because they're not particularly close together. Oops. Let's try that again. Variability. There we go. Uh, another situation would be where both we are nowhere near the center of our sampling or our sample distribution, or excuse me, our population mean. But our dots also aren't particularly close to one another, so maybe something like this. So this would be a situation where we have both high bias and high variability. So that's particularly undesirable. What we're looking for, though, is to have both low bias and low variability. So that would be a situation where we are all clustered, all of our points from our sampling distribution were clustered pretty close to the mean, so something like this. This would be the ideal. So again, we, oops, we are hoping for both low bias and low variability. And the reason we want to have low bias and low variability uh, is because then we can be more confident about any um, statements or any conclusions that we draw from our sampling distribution that we want to be able to apply to our population as a whole.